Hello and welcome to this new video on All Smart Repair. In this video I'm going to show you how to replace the charging port of an iPad 2019. You can also use the video for the iPad 2017, 2018, 2020 and 21. It's almost the same procedure so yeah you can use the video for them as well. Here you can see the new charging port. As you can see it needs to be soldered to the main board and yeah that's not very easy but it's makeable. So I want to show you um, that the charging port is not working correctly. When I plug it in you can see nothing is happening. Oh now it's happening okay. But you can almost see already there's like a wobbler inside the charging port so it's not charging perfectly and always stopping to charge. There's no dirt inside so the charging port itself got a mail function that means we need to replace the charging port. By the way we will also replace the battery when it's already open. It's easy to change that one as well and the customer asked for it so we will do it. So the first step will be to open the display glass uh, when the glass is not cracked. Yeah, we want to try to use it again. It's not very easy because it's glued all over the whole frame. So we need to be very carefully by prying it out. Therefore, I will use my 13.1 um, set. You can also buy it through the links in the description. Here you can see a nice scalp that's inside and also um, a nice screwdriver with six bits inside. You can use them for all models and many more useful tools for smartphone or tablet repair, mostly for Apple products. So on the first step we need to heat up the display. Uh, we can use a heat plate like I'm doing. I'm going to show you uh, my heat plate very soon now. And you can also use a hair dryer or a hot air station. I recommend to use a heat plate because it's heating the whole device um, yeah, mostly at the same time to the same temperature. Um, yeah, That's the best way to do it. I will put the iPad to the side and we'll show you the heat plate now. I'm using um, those big heat plate here. There's no vacuum function. You can also use the uh, heat plates with the vacuum function. So for the first step, as we talked, we need to heat up the display. I will put the iPad now on the heat plate. Before I do this, I will shut down the device. Also, you don't need to wear those gloves. I just think they are cool to use, so I wear them. Side facts, the heat plate is set to 100 degrees. Um, that's perfect for heating up the surface here. We now put the suction cup in the right corner or left corner. No worries, doesn't matter. Always use a protection glass, that's very important, because if it cracks, you will get glass into your eyes. Next step is to take the scalp, put it up here very carefully inside. You need to put it between the frame and the glass. Next step is to take isopropanol. Don't use too much because if you use too much it can go into the LCD and we don't want to do that because it will be awful later. Next step is to take a thin plastic tool. You can also take those thin chips that are inside the set. And when we are inside, now we can use the isopropanol again, put it on the plastic layer and now slide very carefully down the screen. Don't do it too fast because we always need to apply some isopropanol again. And we will stop like here because here are the flex cables and we don't want to damage them. We will first remove all the glue adhesive in the upper and on the other side. Therefore we use more isopropanol for sure and we will proceed with that procedure like all the way around until we are here because there is the home button. We need to be careful there as well. 
because the flex cable can be easily damaged and we don't want to damage the home button for sure because then we will lose the touch ID function and that will be very bad. Always put some more isopropanol for removing the glue and also if the heat is gone we need to put it back on the heat plate because the combination of the isopropanol and the heat is the perfect way to loosen the screens. I just heated up the device again and as you can see this chip is a little bit bent but that's not a problem. We use some more isopropanol and now we go to the other side and try to pry the chip to the bottom of the device. Very carefully. When we are here we use some more isopropanol because the glue layer is going to be thicker in the bottom here again like it was on the upside. As I told you before we need to be very carefully by the home button. The home button is like this place here. I'm now going the flex cable down and going here. So we need to be very careful in this in this step to not damage the button and the flex cable of the button. Don't go too far inside. Use some more isopropanol for that. Always use a suction cup as well for sure to not Try too much to the glass. The more we use the suction cup, the better. The more the glass is protected by for cracking. And that's it. So as you can see, it's not going well for me always. So yeah, sometimes the glass is cracking as well. But well, that's not an issue because yeah, we just replace the glass with a new one. It's not that expensive. But it would be nice to use the original one. I was just, this is silly, like I was nearly finished with it, but then it cracked. But not a problem, as I said. Most important thing is that the home button is okay, because this one cannot be replaced when it's broken. And we will now pry up the display glass here. Yeah, as you can see, it's not always going perfect for professionals as well. Um, sometimes you maybe, yeah, like there maybe could be a little thin crack here. I didn't see and that's going to crack the whole display when you're going to pry there. And now we can pull up the display. And we can open it to the right side. Um, I will just uh, take some cleaning stuff, clean the glass here away so we can go on with the video and then I will show you how to remove the LCD, the touchscreen and we will remove the battery and the charging port first place and yeah I won't show how to replace the glass screen because I already did a video for that and it's like there's so many videos for that in the internet. So next step take the screwdriver and unscrew we need to unscrew four screws here for the main LCD. So I unscrewed all of the screws. Now we are taking the scalp again and we will be very carefully prying these corners to remove the LCD from the adhesive that is sticking the LCD to the frame. It's not very strong so it will be very easy and you don't have to take too much force for that. As you can see how I'm doing it. And after that we can take one corner, pull it up, like push it a little bit down and then we can pull it up completely. Now we need the screwdriver again and remove the three head screws here. Those three screws are the same size like also the LCD screws were. 
One of the screws were stick to the magnet here, so I need to take out my tweezer and just take it away. Those plastic tweezers are also included in the 131 set, so you can buy them online and easily use them. The cool thing about these things is you cannot damage the circuits, so yeah, you can just pry everything up with this thing and you don't need any other tool for that. We removed the LCD. We will put the LCD to the side very carefully. Don't touch it too much because we don't want to have too much dirt on it that we later need to clean for sure. Next step will be to remove the flex cable from the home button. Therefore, there's like some silicone above it. We just pull it to the side and yeah, put it to the magnet magnetic mat again, where also all of the screws are. I think I mentioned that before. Next step, take the tweezer again, remove the sticker here, pull up the home button flex holder and then we can remove the flex cable with the LCD. Yeah, now I have removed the touchscreen. We need, if your screen is broken like mine now, we need to remove the home button and put it on another touchscreen. Also, I need to clean all of those uh, stuff here, all the glue and the adhesive residue. That's very important so the new display is sticking to it perfectly. If the screen won't be broken, we could easily use the old adhesive. We don't need to clean anything. So yeah, for me it's <laughs> some more work. I also need to pay the touchscreen on my own because I was the one that cracked it. And yeah, that's... Yeah, for you it's maybe nice to see how to do it, but for me it's like more work now. No problem. <coughs> I will remove here the sticky thick glasses that were left. And the rest of it will be done later when I clean the part. I will show it to you in the speed view because it's very boring to watch it like removing because it's a little work to do. Next step will be to take the screwdriver again and remove all of the <coughs> screws we have left on the main board. First step, remove the battery connector and the next step will be to remove all the screws in the upside. Remember where the screws have been because they will be different sizes and you don't want to mess up your main board because you made a, a long screw inside the wrong hole. I will also go on and remove already the screws for the battery. Uh, charger for the charging port guys, sorry. Two more screws in the bottom here. I think those two screws you don't need to remove, but I just did it because I thought they need to. They're just holding this metal thing inside, so the charging part is sitting in the right space. <coughs> so I will just screw them back inside because it was not needed to remove them. It's not like I'm doing this charging port replacements every day. I'm mostly doing uh, screen repairs for iPads and that's why, yeah, some screws I don't remove that often. So don't, don't wonder why I just did it here because I just don't do it that often. <clears throat> yeah, so now we remove those screws and the upper top. We need to remove this metal plate here. 
and it's sticked underneath um, maybe the best thing is uh, to yeah remove the upper side first therefore we need to take the scalp again This stuff is not that important, it is holding the LCD in the right position. But if you screw it to the right position, it's enough as well, so you don't need to replace those later. That's not important. Like you can see, I can now flip over this metal plate here, <coughs> and it's left stick underneath the battery, I think as it seems. So we can now take the scalp and cut this one. There are no flex cab cable underneath so that's no problem to do. You can easily do this without damaging anything. Next step we will remove all of the connectors that are to the main board. As I can see here's a screw left. We need to remove this as well later. But I will go on with the flex cable connections now. And the upper side, there's the yeah, camera here. I'll flip over the flex cable because I think it's better to handle later because it's not yeah, in the way when removing the main board. Next step, those flex cable here and those two flex cables. Oh, there's a free flex cables. <coughs> then we have this flex cable. This is an antenna flex cable. No, it's not flex cable. It's an antenna. <laughs> you just pull this up, I think. Yeah, it's pulling up. And this antenna as well. It's glued to the plate. As you can see, there's so much glue around the charging pot that we need to remove later for sure. Yeah, next step, we have one more flex cable for the SIM card. In this case, we have a SIM card, so it needs to be removed. And we have two more antenna cables here sticking to the main board. And we just pull those flex ca cables up so they are removed from the charging port itself. We have some more of that so we just going to do it like this. This will be very hard to glue later, but no problem. This is how it is. Why do they use so much glue for this model? And maybe for some models that's not that much as it is here, but for this model it is what it is. This one will be removed, I'll pull it to the side and glue back later. These are the speaker flex cable connections that are going to the charging port flex cable as you can see. For sure those are going to be removed as well. <clears throat> and in this step we can also already pull out the charging port, just press it. Charging port already removed and only the main board is holding 
charging port in place right now. Same we will do for the upper top for the flex cable connections that are yeah glued to the main board here. We will have so much fun putting back all of those flex cable connections here. Those iPads are built that shit as fuck. We also have some antenna flex cables, antenna cables left on the up here. Also one more screw I just mentioned later. And we have a connection underneath as well, I think. No, but this connection here. And this one needs to be removed as well. One more flex cable connection down here for the iPad 2019. As I mentioned before, it will be very similar for yeah iPad 18 from 2018, from 2017, 2020, 21. Um, it's mostly similar build, but there will be little differences. So yeah, don't worry. Just remember, maybe film it, and you will later know where it comes from and you can replace it easily that's how i'm doing it always but mostly i know where anything is coming from next step will be to heat up this stuff i will first clean up the space here so no more glasses in the way and i will also show you uh, how to remove the home button from the touchscreen if it's broken like mine i think i will do this first we put the ipad to the side this will be very easy and fast. Pull the flex cable very carefully. Then we take the scalp and go underneath the flex cable. Lift it like very gentle. Then we go underneath here and underneath here. This will come up now. Then we go underneath here. Pull up the home button and the flex cable is removed. If there is glass left uh, on the home button or like I have here, we can take the scalp, remove that stuff, and on the home button we have something left as well. Yeah, the home button we will put now to the side because we don't need it now. The touchscreen I will put in the bin now because it's broken. For the next step, we need to heat up the whole device. I already did this with my heat plate again, and we now need some isopropanol for removing the adhesive stickery from the battery and the main board therefore i apply a little bit of isopropanol to the side of the main board and also to the side of the battery because i already heated up i don't need to heat it up again now so we can go on by prying up the main board with a thin pry tool here be very gentle here, don't use too much force. I think we need some more isopropanol here, so the glue is losing its fit. So as you can now see, the main board is already very loose and we can now take it out. Flip it over and there we have the charging port connection and underneath we can solder it with a new charging port. This I will show underneath uh, the microscope, but first we will remove the battery so I can go on and clean up the frame already when I'm 
doing the soldering next to the soldering and then I will show you the soldering and then the microscope as I said. The main board we will now put to the side because we uh, want to remove the battery now and therefore we need to heat it up again and use some more isopropanol for that so the glue is losing its hold. To remove the battery we need some kind of pry tool. Um, I have some plastic chips here. You can use anything for that to pry out the battery. Just go underneath and also use some more isopropanol here so the glue is getting loose. It's not very easy because uh, the batteries from the iPads are very strong glued to the frame. So take your time. Don't bend the battery too much so it's not going up. So I have the first cell loose. Now I'm doing the second one. Be careful with the flex cables here. And now we can pull out the second one and remove the whole battery. Now you can see I have it removed in my hand. I flip it over and stack it together and now it's coming into the bin and will be recycled hopefully. <laughs> so next step will be to replace a new charging port. I will show this underneath the microscope. I hope you know what I'm doing there because it will be very close to the port here and you will only see the connections because we want this to be perfect. For the first step of removing the old flex cable connection we put some solder flux on the old flex cable connection then we take our soldering iron and put some solder on the flex cable connection. Now we take some more solder and yeah, heat up um, the flex cable from the left side and slowly pull it up a little bit we could do this completely until the connection is removed, but I want to have it easy, so I take my heat gun, um, the quick, and heat up the flex cable connection for this connection. This is possible to do because there are no parts to damage behind. Therefore, I used 400 degrees. We now take some more solder flux. And now we take uh, the copper wire to remove the solder that is on the pins of the mainboard connection for the flex cable connection of the charging port. You don't need to do this, but if you want to yeah, do it great, you should do it. So you have your new flex cable is laying down perfectly. As you can now see, I removed the solder flux with some isopropanol and the fresh tissue. And now I already have fluxed the new charging port a little bit from the other side. Lay it down so on the left and the right, those two gold dots are yeah, looking through the holes of the new charging port flex. We center it carefully with the tweezer and after we have done that we can already take our soldering iron and re-solder the new charging port to the main board of the iPad 2019. As I said before you can use the video for other devices as well. I'm starting soldering from the middle of the flex cable and yeah then carefully going all the way to the left and all the way to the right so it's laying perfectly and centered. Also I'm taking the tweezers as you can see to yeah, press down the flex cable so all the connections will be perfectly set. Now we take our copper wire again and remove the solar iron residue 
after that yeah I cleaned it with the isopropanol again and now put on the tape so as you can now see I have finished the charging port replacement by soldering a new one to the main board and as you can see I also attached back this protection film here and glued a little T7000 here so the flex cable cannot easily bend and break the solder connections here. Also I already cleaned up all the adhesive residue of the frame as you can see. I also used some isopropanol to clean it perfectly so there's no glue left on the frame and the new display touchscreen is uh, sitting perfectly to the frame. I also made uh, the touchscreen ready already because yeah as you saw in the video I broke it and I need to replace it with a new one. As you can see um, I have already some teaser glue on here um, it's both sided glued and I removed it on the edges where the long sides where the glue is very thin and therefore I'm using the T7000 later. So now we'll put the touchscreen to the side and we will go on with the battery. This is the next thing we will put back inside so as you can see I also cleaned the adhesive residue here for the battery. Uh, we remove the battery protection film here. Underneath there is a new glue already so we don't need to replace that. Turn it around, place the hole above this bar. And carefully lay down. <coughs> the battery is now replaced and we can go on with the main board. This will be a little bit tricky because we have so many different cables that are going around here so we need to be very careful by putting it inside so no flex cables are underneath the main board. We will start with the bottom with the charging port. I will remove the adhesive sticker here and we can now pull up all of those cables and try to put in the charging port correctly. As I said <coughs> you need to be very careful about here so all of the flex cables are coming above the flex cable and the main board. Charging port is now correctly inside so we can glue it to the frame. Now that's already glued. Try to pull the flex cables above the main board as I said before. Be very gentle here. Don't take too much force. It's not needed. We do the same thing on the upside. There we have some more flex cables and yeah, as I told you before, be very gentle here. Don't use force. If one flex cable is underneath the main board, no worries. Just lift it up again and do the same thing again. So now all the flex cables above the main board and charging port. For the battery I lifted it up a little bit again so the flex cable of the charging port is underneath the battery as well. Now we can push to the battery so the glue of the battery is sticking to the frame perfectly and it's not loose anymore. <coughs> For the next step I now will reconnect all of the flex cables in first place so just watch it and do it as I do. We will start with the top here. I will start with the camera. Antenna.
The last two flex cables are these two guys here. Therefore I need another tweezer, a metal tweezer I'm using because they're very hard to fit in the ports without a metal tweezer where you can use a little more force than the plastic tweezers. Then we will close them as we always do. So after we reconnected all of the antenna connection and flex cable connection, the next step will be to screw back all the screws. I will start with this one here because it not belongs into the metal plate that goes above the main board. Then we take the metal plate, flip it a little bit over. So this glue sticker here is going between as it did before. And we don't need to replace this one it has not a very huge function, so it's not needed to re be replaced with a new glue sticker. Don't worry about this. When it's back on top, we screw back all the screws. Next step, connect the battery to the main board again with a screw for the battery for sure. Next step, screw back the charging port screws. I just recognized that I forgot one antenna flex cable, one antenna cable, I have to say. It was underneath the main board, so I flipped up the battery again, pulled it out and plugged it in again. Also, we have to see later if the flex cable connection are laying in the correct way, so the LCD is fitting perfectly. Therefore, I just checked it, the LCD is working perfect like it's laying flat inside and this is the important thing, so nothing is pushing to the LCD and yeah, causing a failure later or maybe a punctual yeah, light bulb that is coming from the cables that are pushing against the LCD. Yeah, so the next thing will be to check if everything is working. Like we now have to check if the charging port is working and also if the battery is working and also charging. This is very important because if not, we have to unplug everything and do it again. Sometimes these things happen, but mostly not. So, first thing, let's take the touchscreen. This is now just for testing. I will not put everything back now. I just want to see if everything is working and we did everything right. Home button flex cable is connected as well and now we connect the LCD flex cable to the main board. Flip everything over and start the device. As you can see the Apple logo is appearing. So now as the device has started, we can see the screen is coming up and as you can see the new touch screen is working perfectly. But the most important thing is, is the charging port working again? And we have to look and as you can see it's working. I'm trying to wobble here a little bit to the charging port that 
yeah, it's breaking the connection. But as you can see, the charging port is just working perfectly fine. Um, the battery is loading up capacity. So yeah, we can go on with closing the iPad. The repair was very su successfully. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it until here. And now we will go on and put back together everything. So the first step before we can go on with screwing back all the back plates, we take this silicone part and place it above the flex cable of the home button. It is very important to use this thing because the home button flex cable needs to be in the right position before replacing everything. For the next step, we take the LCD, put it up like I'm doing it, checking if the flex cable connection of the touchscreens are on it perfectly. Now we take these metal plates that are protecting the flex cable connection so they not go loose when the iPad like is falling down or something. Then I take my big screwdriver, you can use a normal screwdriver as well. And this is like a little more easier because I don't need to screw with my hand, it's all doing on its own and also screwing to the right position with the right force. This is finished, now we can take the LCD and place it into the frame. You should not need any force to do that, so if you have like some issues putting it down here, maybe the antenna uh, cable connections are not in the right space, so check that if yeah you have troubles here. For the next step, um, we now screw the four screws of the LCD inside. In the next step we now clean the LCD properly, therefore I just take those yeah, tissues that are coming with um, like screen protectors or so. This first thing is rubbing alcohol, mostly isopropanol and it's perfect for cleaning that kind of stuff here for a perfect finish and so all of the dirt is gone because we don't want to have any dirt later between the LCD and the touchscreen layer. Now we take part two, mostly this thing is not enough, so I have a tissue here which I would like to use first. Now I'm using this small thing here. Because um, this stuff did not clean the adhesive residue, I needed to take some real isopropanol from my bottle here. And now <coughs> the glue stickers are going away. This is how we want it. So after the LCD is cleaned perfectly, we now remove the adhesive stickers that I have here on my new touchscreen. If you don't have this, skip this step.
Now I have removed the adhesive stickers and the next thing is that we need to clean the display. Now for cleaning the LCD I'm using an uh, air blower. Normally it's for computer keyboards for cleaning the dust but I'm using it all the time. Therefore I'm putting it on cleaning and also I'm using an, a dust lamp. With a dust lamp I can see if there's any more dust on the LCD screen. And yeah, now we go start. So now when mostly all of the dust is gone, I'm trying to remove the rest. Um, normally I'm underneath a uh, yeah, dust protection room, so yeah, this is not needed to be done. But for you in the video, I'm going to show you how to do it if you don't have the opportunity like I have. And for the next step, I will now glue the one side where I don't have adhesive on the touchscreen therefore I'm using the T7000 it's a very nice glue and I can recommend it to you for all kinds of display repairs for smartphones tablets whatever you can also buy this thing in the shop for sure and uh, now I'm trying to clean again because dust is everywhere in the air here Now I'm going to remove the protection layer of the inner side of the touchscreen. And now we can lay over the touchscreen. We will now remove the upper side protection of the touchscreen so we can see if there's any more dirt underneath the LCD and between the LCD and the touchscreen. This is important to do. For me it's looking perfect at the moment, <clears throat> so now I'm turning this thing around and I need the T7000 again and need to glue the other side as well. Now I'm gonna push the touchscreen to the glue. I pull it from left to right so the flex cables are going into the right position and not going to be between the glass and the yeah, frame. This is very important. Also we need to check if the camera is in the right position. It is and yeah we can also stick everything to the frame. As you can see touchscreen is still working perfectly fine. Home button is working perfectly so yeah this worked great until here now we just need to wait a little bit for the T7000 to uh, dry a little bit and after it's dried a little more we can push it to the frame and clean everything perfectly so add this glue dried for some seconds like I'm doing this for half a minute or a minute we are now taking isopropanol and a fresh soft tissue and we can already clean all the adhesive residue from the frame so it's already looking very perfect 
we do this for both sides or if we use it for more sides. We do it everywhere where the glue is coming out of the frame. So as you can now see, touch screen and display is looking perfect, working perfect, charging port and battery was replaced successfully. You can use the video for the iPad 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020 and 2021 and maybe also for models that aren't even out now. One thing more I want to do is I will put a thin layer of teaser at the edge of the display so the glue can rest briefly. It will take like one day for the T7000 to harden out completely and so we are on the safe side. The flex cables are not pushing the display out and we will not have any loose glass here like mostly repair stores have it with their repair method but with this glue and this method you won't have any yeah glass that is coming up later i hope you enjoyed the video and you leave a like and a comment in the description also i would be nice if you would leave a abo for my channel and yeah so i will do more videos in the future for you guys and see you next time ciao